Hello, Whiskey Freaks. Welcome back to the Beastmasters Club podcast. In this episode, we are joined once again by our friend Josh Hatton. Josh is the founder of the Whiskey Jubilee and Single Cask Nation, an American independent bottler based on a Scottish model. And on this podcast, Josh is going to be treating us to a selection from his new Single Cask Nation retail line. So Single Cask Nation has, at this point, been an independent bottler that is doing all of their work online through online membership. But now he is creating a line that will be available in retail stores in a few states. Just a little Beastmasters Club business before we jump into hearing from Josh. Uh, There will be no event this month in December. We are kind of going dark for the holidays on the event side, but we have an really amazing year shaping up for 2017 we've got a lot of planning going on and we've got a bunch of things coming that we think you'll be very excited about we're working on a few amazing events and some incredible private barrels i think at this point we're lining up some stuff with four roses with whistle pig with westland uh, and a, a whole gang of other folks that we'll start to publicize soon so stay tuned to our channels for some more information about all of that And hopefully we'll be seeing you at some events in the new year. From me and Steve here at Beastmasters Club, we want to wish you a very happy and merry holiday season. We hope that you're able to celebrate early and often with some whiskey. We know we will be. Uh, Thank you for all your support so far in the Beastmasters Club. We could not do it without you. So we feel the love and we appreciate it. So enough from me. Here's our little sit down with Josh checking out his single cask nation retail line. Beastmasters Club, experiencing the world's finest whiskey one bottle at a time. We are here with Josh Hatton again from Single Cast Nation. Hey, Josh. Hello. Thanks for having me again. Uh, so we found out that Josh had, is just releasing uh, a new sort of retail line of Single Cast Nation bottles and invited him so that we, we invited him to pour them for us for free. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Josh Thanks, is going to take us through the the new Single Cask Nation retail lineup, sure. uh, what he's offering, and we're going to discuss. So what so uh, what was behind the move to kind of, uh, you, you've had this club for a few years mm-hmm. now, right? Five, four or five years, something like that? Five years, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, it'll be five years in February. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh. Cool. Uh, officially, we, we've... We started the company in May of 2011, but didn't launch membership until February 2012. Mm. Gotcha. So Single Cast Nation, right? You can uh, join online and you get access to buying these sort of very limited edition mm-hmm. private barrels and you get a nice t-shirt and stuff, right? Yeah. Is that an a- <laughs> adequate description? <laughs> yeah. Uh, when, we first, when we first started, um, well, let me back up a little bit. Yes. Uh, it, it, it's membership based, and what people would traditionally do is they'd go online, singlecastnation.com, and there were there were different levels of membership. So you'd have you know just straight up entry level, thirty six bucks to join, that gives you access to the whiskeys. And then there there was, and I'm using the word was because this is, this is going to change in 2017. Um, you know the next level up, which gives you a welcome bottle, the T-shirt that you talked about, some mm-hmm. glassware. And a uh, malt whiskey yearbook. Which mm-hmm. do you guys have the malt whiskey yearbook? No, I don't think so. It is such a good book. That is the book to get. Mm. Um, and then there was a third tier, which was a little more money, uh, two bottles of your choice, more glassware, and then three years off of you know not having to to re up your membership because it's thirty six bucks per year to right. to renew your membership. Um, Starting in January 2017, so in just a couple weeks, we're getting rid of paid membership, but we're still doing online-only bottles. Mm. So what we're tasting through right now is the launch of our retail line. So this is our first outturn of four different whiskeys. We'll have a retail line, and then we'll we'll still have an online uh, range of casks as well. They'll be totally different. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, and, and you can join. You can still become a member, but it's you don't have to pay anymore now. It's just join online. Mm. Like uh, I was going to say, Beastmasters Club is free. Which that was our mistake. We should have been charging thirty six bucks. <laughs> yeah. But now they're now they're both free. So. And then in five years, you'll figure out 
that they, we should have charged we'll, thirty six yeah. bucks, and then we'll be paying people to join. If you join, we'll send you a check for ninety nine cents. Then we'll show up at your yeah. house in a grass skirt. <laughs> yeah, no one's gonna want that, my friend. <laughs> they might, there might know. be a few brave souls out there, but uh, I would think that they're gonna regret it later. When I actually show up, they'll be like, he'll never show up. <laughs> and I'll be like, nah, nah. Hey, what's up? Oh my God. We thought he was kidding. <laughs> we thought it was a joke, man. You know, please, please take off the skirt. Oh, like, oh. Go away. Or don't take off the skirt. Uh, oh my God. He's twerking. <laughs> <laughs> that's another fee. That's another that's fee. A, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's the three year membership. Oh, forget <laughs> it then. I, I need twerking to come with the. So you're going to, uh, so these you'll basically just be able to go buy in a store. Yeah. Um, right now we're, we're launching in, uh, California, New York, New Jersey, um, California, New York, New Jersey, Illinois, and Massachusetts. Oh, cool. And, um, there's a chance that it may go into Connecticut to start too. We're, we're not really certain of that. Um, yeah. Cool. So California, New York, New Jersey, Mass, and Illinois. Illinois. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. You're covering a lot of major cities there with Correct. that. Correct. Correct. There's, and that's really the start. We want to be in more markets. Uh, and actually, let me let me correct myself. We'll also be in uh, Alberta, Canada. Hmm. So. Uh, so if you're in Calgary, if, working exactly. on an oil project or going skiing, <laughs> you can Have get some, some nice SCN retail SCN whiskey to warm you up. Eh? Yeah. The McKenzie brothers approve, eh? I don't know That's why cool. I, where, where that came from. <laughs> yeah. So uh so you you do a lot of cask hunting right in the in, in, in the aisle? Yeah. Um so these casks, we selected these casks in August mm-hmm. along with a few others for uh our online. Um and my business partner Jason actually just came back from Scotland. And we selected another eight casks. Cool. Some of which will be for the second outturn of, re- of retail, and some of which will go to um, online. Mm-hmm. And and it it runs the gamut of young Ben Nevis, like seven year old whiskey from Ben Nevis Distillery, to twenty one year old Tormor, to some grain whiskey matured mm. in a Muscatel cask. Mm. You know, just interesting unusual delicious that's what we're looking for so is that your kind of your thing some sort of maybe a little bit off the beaten path um sometimes you tend not to do like mccallan and uh, you know very sort of yeah well you know the problem with some of those is is the cost for the cast are 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 too much right now um we do like interesting whiskeys Mm -hmm. uh off the beaten path whiskeys but at the same time if we find a whiskey that is you know, a shining example of, you know, here's a great Brooklotti, you know, then we'll bottle that, you know, as a shining example of what they could do, mm-hmm. you know. But if we find an odd one that also, you know, from nose to palate to finish is this fun, interesting, and delicious whiskey, we'll go for that too. There's no, when it comes to that, there's no set criteria. It just becomes, if the whiskey's good, we have to figure out why we're selecting it. Mm-hmm. Is it is it good because it's interesting and off the beaten path, or is it good because, man, this is some of the best, you know, Lafroy I've tasted and mm. God knows how long. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. All right well, should we uh, dive should in? Tell us yeah. a little bit about yeah. this. Uh, is it Gervin? Correct. Am I that right? <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, the first one is our only single grain whiskey, and it's. Uh, Actually, the way I have it lined up from left to right, so we have the four whiskeys. Uh, it's the Girvan Distillery. It's in the lowlands of Scotland. Hmm. Uh, it's an absolutely massive grain distillery. Um, a lot of the juice just goes into the Grant's blend. Uh-huh. Hmm. Um, uh, and so this, what this is, this is 10 years in, um, in a bourbon barrel. Now, the paperwork that comes with the cask says... Um, refill bourbon. So that'll mean it's the cask has been used, this is probably the third time. Mm-hmm. Right. However, the color, the nose, and the palate suggest something a little different. And I think you'll find that when, when, when we go to it. Well, it's got a nice color. So, I mean, 
Yeah, it's like a it's really nice pale. golden. Yeah. So this is Gervin Single Grain Whiskey, 2006, 57.7%. Yep. Nice. Hmm. Have you guys had grain whiskey before? Not a lot. I don't know. I don't know if I have. It's grain whiskey is known for having this much lighter flavor profile. Mm-hmm. It's not made in the same way that that single malt is. You know, single malt. If if we're just talking about Scotland, single malt is generally speaking twice distilled in in copper pot stills. Mm-hmm. Where grain whiskey is produced much in the same way that bourbon is, continuous stills. You know, column stills. Um, so they're stripping a lot out, and they're they're distilling to a higher ABV, um, and for the most part, putting the the liquid into y- sort of spent casks. Right, the casks don't necessarily need to um, lend that much to the whiskey because if they're releasing a Grant's blend, I don't know of the exact age of the blend, mm-hmm. but Scotch whiskey only needs to be three years and one day old. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they're going to use a lot of the grain to fill most of the bottle, and then the rest is going to be filled out maybe with some Balvenie or some Glenfiddich or something like that yeah, to get their, malt. you know, some of the malt to get the flavor profile. Mm-hmm. So they don't necessarily need the grain to do a lot of flavor. They want the malt to do that. Um so generally speaking, younger grain tends to be not that palatable mm-hmm. uh, because the cask really isn't doing much. But we selected this one specifically because the influence of the cask is kind of big on this. Mm-hmm. And you're getting some of these citrusy notes, some of these floral notes on there, but I'm getting these lovely like vanilla, coconut, these spicy kind of elements to it as well. Yeah, like a yeah. honey spice. Yeah. I got a lot of flowers like... Um, Kind of like a lavendery, kind mm. of lilac-y type of thing. Yeah, lilac, like lilac hibiscus, like something yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. I mean, I think you've been one of the things you that's interesting about what you've been doing is you've been kind of deconstructing these blends and showcasing some of the ingredients. Like when you did the light whiskey experiments yeah. with High West, yeah. uh, light whiskey was would that sort of be the American equivalent of the grain? That's that's it. Yeah. yeah. It's just like um, like basically corn uh, whiskey, basically just, like just almost like shine style, just grain grain alcohol that they're making. Yeah, yeah. So grain whiskey would be, you know, if it's MGP grain whiskey, they would take their their bourbon mash bill or whatever. They distill it. The law says somewhere between eighty and ninety four and a half percent alcohol, and then it's it's diluted down to a, a barrel entry ABV. Mm. And they put it into used oak, and that's American light whiskey. Ah, okay. And so this is distilled in a similar way, uh, you know, that uh, that light whiskey would be made. Um, and they don't, they don't have to necessarily stick to a specific single grain. Mm. The single just means it's from a single distillery, not not from a single grain. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was pretty cool at the Jubilee. Was it two Jubilees ago? We did that class, that blending class with High West. That and was um, 2014, so yeah, two. Okay. Two um, jubilees ago. So they, they had everybody. They gave everybody a bourbon, a rye, and a light whiskey, and we all made our made our blends, and then kind of compared blends and stuff like that. And then you released a a, a, a festival bottling of the yeah. light whiskey, which is mm. pretty interesting. So that's sort of what what people are doing when they're creating blended whiskey. Blended whiskey. They're, yeah. they're they're mixing and matching a bunch of different things. They're using the light whiskey almost as like filler, or as a base. Like well, a base to yeah. When it comes with. to Scotch whiskey, yeah, it's 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 filler. Mm-hmm. It really is filler. So that they can release really inexpensive blends. Sure. Um, right. Like a Dewar's kind of deal. Yeah, yeah. Like a Dewar's or a Johnny Red mm-hmm. or, you know, and, and there's so many blends out there. About 92% of all Scotch whiskey is blends. Sure. Yeah. So, and that's really driving the market. So, uh, so grain distilleries like Gervin. Uh, like Inver Gordon and a few others are just chugging away for these blends. Right. For them, it's much more of like a production, totally production economy yeah. kind of thing. Like yeah. they're they're making uh, like a commodity, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
me being the kind of skeptical dick that I am, I, I made my blend and I poured it for a bunch of people and they were like, oh, it's really comes together nicely, you know, <laughs> and like it was just the bourbon. Like, I just, oh, really? I just, I just didn't blend you didn't blend anything. <laughs> that's, that's real nice, bro. Yeah. 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 Good job. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, you just wanted to be like, eh, eh. Right, yeah. What's well, I taste, I tasted a bunch of different things, and I was like, I just like the bourbon. So there's Steve's blend. It's 100 percent bourbon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's your blend. It's bourbon nice. and air. Yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> but this is cool. I mean, uh, I, I, if you had said, "Oh, taste some," you know, almost 60 percent grain uh, alcohol or whatever, you know, grain spirits, um, and then you poured me, I wouldn't think, you know, this is very drinkable. It's got, mm-hmm. like you said, it's got a lot of that cask that like. You know, the wood, the charred wood, vanilla tastes and all that. Um, so it seems more active than some third or fourth fill. Yeah, uh, bourbon, exactly. bourbon cast. Maybe the grain pulls more out. I don't know. Um, you know, that's the that's the magic of casks. Yeah. You, never you don't know. know what the hell's going on in there. Right. Um, Just some random, random chance and who knows. Right. You know, it could be that the first two times they used it, they used it for the three years. Oh, right. And then this right. one, they used it for the 10. So, you know, mm. it it's really tough to tell. Right. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that because it could be a 20-year or it could be three-year. and But it's one use. One use. Right. One use, so, yeah. Oh, interesting. Yep. Yeah. So it's like, so the uses are like from the time it's filled to the time it's emptied, that's one use. It doesn't matter how many it's years. It's one fill. It's, it's like just when it's right, filled. One fill, yep, one right. empty. Yep. Interesting. I never really thought. I mean, it makes sense. They're never like uh, filled for X amount of years, but... You never, you never think about that, but the variation that could happen, like it could be four years, it could be, could be 30 years. It could be yeah. s- mm-hmm. 60 years if it was two long fills, although that's unlikely, right? Because the barrel would probably be decomposing at that point, but I don't know. You don't know. No yeah. idea. Anyway, and as it's opening up, I kind of getting some heavy kind of apricot stone fruit kind of thing going on too. It's, it's, cool. it, it's more complex than you would expect. Definitely. For sure. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's tasty. Like yeah. it's a good sipper. Yeah, and that's the the beautiful thing. One of the beautiful things about grain um, is that right now, if you find grain, chances are it's much more uh, price competitive to a malt whiskey. Oh, sure, you can get like forty year grain whiskeys for yeah. There's uh, a hundred bucks. Like exclusive malts released a forty two year old Invergordon, mm-hmm. nineteen seventy three, my birth year. Nice. Oh, um, it was your birthday yesterday? Happy birthday! Oh, thank you. Yeah, happy thank birthday. You. Um, and that was, you know, it's three hundred, three hundred and fifty dollar bottle for forty two year old mm. Scotch whiskey. You try that on a forty two year old Macallan or Laphroaig or right. what have you. Anything, yeah, anything. Yeah. So this is the difference between grain and one of the differences between grain and malt is you can get it at a really good price and it's damn good juice. Is mm. it called Scotch whiskey? Is yeah, it's still okay. Scotch whiskey. It's just not just single, not malt. single it's malt. Just not single yeah. malt. Single grain. Cool. Yeah. Single grain. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe maybe we're unlocking a new thing, the grain whiskeys. You know, and what, and, we, and as I mean, us just taking credit for what you're yeah. doing because this <laughs> is the first time we've tasted it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still is it is the grain process differently handled differently, or is it just the distillation process that's different? The actual still, uh, it's the distillation process is definitely different, and then the grain changes from distillery to distillery. Mm. Take for instance, Loch Lomond Distillery. Um, which they produce single malt and and different kinds of single malt. But they also produce single grain whiskey, but their single grain they used malted barley. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But they're distilling it using column still, so therefore right. it's called single grain. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's, so it is it is the process, and from distillery to distillery, it's different. The grains they use is different from distillery to distillery. Ah, okay, so yeah. so they may not be using ba- barley. At every right. distillery to make their grain tends whiskey. to be whatever is cheapest and most convenient. Right. So it could be it, could it be a, it could be a corn whiskey. It in used Scotland? to be corn years ago. Okay. Sometime in the mid '80s, uh, a lot of the distilleries stopped using corn mm. because other grains were cheaper, cheaper. more accessible. Mm. What else do they use? Do they, will they use well, rye? They'll, they'll use wheat. They'll use barley. Wheat. Okay. Yeah. So any whatever they can get their hands on, pretty much. Like fuck to it, make whatever. The grain. Yeah. Do they grow corn in Scotland? No. no, no, right? I don't think no so. Way. I've never seen a corn, no, like a no, corn on the cob. It, I don't think it does. <laughs> don't think it. I don't think it does so well at those latitudes. Right. You know? Well, I'm, I'm excited to try this next one, the Glen Talkers. Yeah, Glen Talkers, or as uh, our our Jewish grandparents would say, Glen Talkers. Glen Talkers. Glen Talkers. 
So uh, Glen Talkers is one of those distilleries that you will you'll never see a bottle come from them mm -hmm. specifically. They don't have their their ten year old, twelve year old, sixteen year old, w whatever the case may be. Mm. They're owned by Pernod Ricard, and this juice is meant to go into blends. Hmm. So single malt for blends, and the common, you know, every distillery has sort of its um, it, its style. You know, uh, Balvenie is known for its honeyed um, aspects. You know, Lafroy is known to be like Dirty Isla. You know, what, whatever it is, Glen Talkers is known for being insanely malty and fruity. Mm. Mm. Which blends does Pernod own? Um, Pernod, they're they're the sh part of the Chivas group. Oh, so Chivas. Chivas. Gotcha. Chivas. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is all yeah. made for Chivas, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow, that is fruity. So this is... Oh, you can just smell it. It's yeah. like a, a big fruity bomb. You know, it, yeah. it has a little bit of the, like, I, I don't know, maybe similar, a little bit of that similar, like, Mocker Bay hmm. uh like nose to it that that, that fruity like okay fruity almost like white chocolate fruity kind of mm -hmm. thing mm. it's almost like a handful of jelly beans like all the different flavors you know mm. like but not like the harry potter fruit. jelly beans <laughs> <laughs> you know, like boogers and dirt and right yeah. vomit yeah. And no not those yeah, yeah, notes of slight notes of about more like a <laughs> more of the Jelly Belly or Ronald Reagan waiting room yeah. kind of jelly beans. You know, coconut, banana, lime, <laughs> yeah. like all the yeah. fruits in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah I so like those pear jelly beans for some reason. You're a strange boy. Yeah, I am. I'm yeah. weird, but like, they're delicious. You know, pear jelly beans. You're suspect. <laughs> <laughs> you're suspect. So anybody comes into your house talking about liquor and pear jelly beans, hey. you're suspect. There you go. Yeah. Mm. So this is, oh yeah, let's read the specs here. So yeah, this is a 2008, 58.1% Glen mm. Talkers. Matured in a refill Oloroso sherry hot set. Ah, so we're going fruit yeah. berries on top of fruit. Yeah, yeah. it's really nice. I, I, I like this. Um, I tend to, I tend to like, you know, obviously go to the, the, the more of our, our beastie, smoke balmy uh malts mm. but i mm. really like this there's something something about this that i that i dig i like the sherry malt but and and this kind of brings it all together with some sherry some of the other nice light fruit on the the finish is almost grappa like it's got oh, kind mm. of grapes and a very kind of dry fruity kind of thing going on and that's what i like like the transition I think is great from nose to palate to finish yeah. where it ends on that that dry note yeah mm -hmm. very sweet yeah. in the front and yeah. dry in the back yeah. yeah i noticed that right away the, the grappa is a good analogy something like that or like a like a plum brandy slivovitzy yeah. kind of mm -hmm. something yeah like good slivovitz though yeah. we've had the we've had our share of bad slivovitz <laughs> oh really <laughs> That's yeah mm. That's my, tough. Uh, That's a tough hangover. The so plum, the plum brandy hangover. <laughs> my 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 great aunt used to make a cherry liquor. That really, was like Ooh. cherry moonshine kind Ooh. of crap. That was a, some kind was of. Was this in the old, old country? country? No, she she kept making it. I, oh, she, really? Yeah, she she always had like a big jar of it in the kitchen. Just it was like uh, kind of like a cherry slivovitz kind that? of thing. Whoa. Well, she was like soaking cherries in grain alcohol. Oh, so she would crazy. Crazy. just get a bottle yeah. of uh, get a bottle of moonshine pretty, and yeah. pretty yeah. much like I think back like where she was from in Poland, they would make that like they made they had their own d distillate or whatever that right, they would do sure. for fruit. But she, obviously, she didn't have a still. Uncle Tavia had like a still. Yeah, or something. yeah, yeah. But she used to. <laughs> but she would keep this just like you know paint stripper cherry stuff. Nice. That was like. <laughs> now they yeah. it's basically like making bitters if you do that nowadays. Yeah. I guess you'd put more in, but yeah, yeah that was it's definitely uh, definitely put some hair on your chest. Look at your look at your like Jewish Dukes of Hazard ancestry. Yeah, That's pretty crazy. sweet. <laughs> some, some crazy Jew, Jewish back country at folk. My grandmother's distillery. <laughs> back, <in, laughs> back at the Paluba Ranch. <laughs> <laughs> I was a huge Dukes of Hazard fan, and I had a Dukes of Hazard lunchbox. So did I. Did you? I did. Yeah, the I had one the metal with the one. with the General Lee flag on the front. Yes. Yeah. So, see, I thought I was the only, 
like six year old Jewish boy walking around with a Confederate flag lunchbox. <laughs> but you were there that. too. That's awesome. That's the only way I could protect myself from right. the town that I grew up in. I'd hide behind the, the flag. Like, but everybody had, like, the Dukes of Hazard were so huge, huge. when we were huge. kids. I, and it had, yeah. like, the yellow thermos with the white top, yeah, I think. Yeah. And, like, oh. a, I had a thermos for sure. Yeah. See, I had yeah. that, and I had the, uh, the Kiss lunchbox. Oh, it was nice. very yeah. sweet. Yeah. But yeah, and we didn't th- we didn't know from the Confederate flag. It was just no, like no. the t- roof of the General Lee. I probably didn't even know it was a flag. I mean, it looked like a I, flag, but I had no idea that yeah. it was associated to anything other than the Dukes of Hazard. And, and my parents must have been horrified. Like, they, totally, they're just probably like, oh, <laughs> oh God, right, no. right. What have we done? Our son is like <laughs> such a, into like some Confederate redneck show. <laughs> I, we, I did, probably didn't even know that there was the whole, right, the whole moon shining angle either. I had I no idea. Didn't I didn't even think about I that. I never understood when I was a kid why they were like always on what? probation. Why, like, yeah. What like why Uncle Jesse was, was always in trouble a, with the law. Yeah, why they couldn't have the a day gun they were born. They, they couldn't have a gun <laughs> and they had to have the explosive like dynamite arrows and <laughs> right, all that right, crap. Right. I, had no, I had no idea. Oh, that's why they had the dynamite arrows. I never even thought about that. I don't yeah. remember the dynamite arrows. Oh, that was like in the opening credits in the later seasons. Oh, they would play blew okay. up an outhouse, as I recall. So they would, they would, they, but they would use them in the show. They would they would have you know they would have their bow and arrow because they couldn't have firearms, I guess, because <laughs> they were on probation. Right. And and so they they would have this thing where they'd have like a stick of dynamite strapped oh, to an arrow. They would like oh. light it and then shoot it at something. I think that was when <laughs> they just swapped out the Duke boys. Remember, like in one season, it was just two like the cousins, like they the Duke cousins. One of them out, I think. <clears throat> they swapped both. I, th- I think it was both. Didn't they just pull that show off the air uh, during the last year or two because they pulled it off Nick at Night and all that because of the Confederate flag oh, controversy? Yeah. Oh, did they? oh, Jesus, oh yeah, come people on. people were up in arms and uh, they yanked it. Anyway, we're we're off <laughs> a pretty good See, tangent I like your at this term, point. They yanked it. They yanked it. They the yanked it off the air. And just yanked, yanked it around. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> we're totally editing in some. Um, Straightening the curves, flattening the hills behind this conversation. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll have to straighten and curve those Scottish hills. Like that and Knight Rider were my shit back in the day. <laughs> and like you try to watch yeah. those shows now, and it's yeah. like no, they're, they're are, unwatchable. It's it's, <laughs> unwatchable. it's unbelievable. Yeah, it, how bad they were. Like there are some shows from back then that like that are still that, like Hunter, like is still pretty good, uh, but like Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, <But> like, <laughs> that's deep. Going to the Fred Dryer <laughs> shit, or like the who was that? The the um, the Equalizer. Like I love that, was that good. show. That's Ooh, still watchable. That. Like all those like those shows were good. But the yeah, Robert McCall wasn't he the Equalizer? I don't know. He was like the familiar. CIA British spy, or Spencer for Hire, or like Magna PI. Spencer even those shows, Hire. even those shows were like okay. Like you turn them on, it's like kitschy and, and ridiculous. Like Tom Selleck and his sure. Hawaiian shirts. But like yeah. you try to watch a, a Night Rider, it's like. It's like comic relief. You know, I think Magnum is probably better than 90% of TV today. Does his today. mustache still hold up? Do you think? <laughs> I oh, hope yeah. so. <laughs> Holds up for me, baby. <laughs> I, I love that Tom Selleck stash. You know, just a man in a mustache and a Detroit Tigers hat driving a Ferrari. Can't go wrong. Okay. All right, we, uh, All right, Higgins, what's next? <laughs> so, uh, oh, so Glenn what, Roth. So is it Glenn Roth or Glenn Rothes? It's keep... Glenn Rothes. Rothes. It's Rothes. actually the Glenn Rothes. The Glenn Rothes. The Glenn Rothes. Mm. That's one of those nice, like, snobby whiskey things you can, like, correct people on. <laughs> like, you know, yeah, they're like Glenn Roths. You're like, uh, 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 I mean, the yeah, Glenn yeah. Rothes. So, do you mean <laughs> the Glenn Rothes? <laughs> so, um, this is a an eight year old Glenn Rothes. Um, it's actually one month shy of being nine years old. Oh, 2007, 56.3%. Yeah. Okay. Uh, another refill sherry. Sherry, I was going to say, yeah. And uh, I don't know. G- give it a go. Let me know what you think. Uh, you guys have had Glenn Rothis before, yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. No, excuse me. I mean, I've had a whole, I've had a whole, like, Glenn Rothis, like, they have some really newer stuff yep. uh, that, that's current release that's, like, seven, eight years old or something. And then I've had, like, some really old, yeah. super dark, uh, yep. I want to say, like, over 30-year-old stuff. Oh, wow. um, okay. mm, nice. Yeah. It's big, vibrant Glenn Rothis. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot going on in there. A lot of sherry. Totally different from the first two. Like none of that, I don't get any of the tropical, like front of the tongue sweet stuff. This is way richer and more. Um, it has, has more of a honey molasses, mm. deeper sweetness. Yeah, exactly. To it, like that, like a thicker, 
gummy or sweetness. Yeah, like a nougaty sort of mm-hmm. like yeah. Yeah, that nougat nose. Candy bar. Yeah. 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 A little Heath bar kind of something going on in there. Caramel, honey, nice. molasses. Wait, where is Glen Rothes? The Glen Rothes? Um, well, it's in Scotland. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, off, off the top. So, do you go to all these distilleries? No, no, no. To no. Pick so, this stuff? so, in this particular case, we selected all of these casks from from a broker. Oh, okay. Um, well, that must be fun. So you just go somewhere, and they've got like. Yeah, and they've got a warehouse of full of casks, or oh. or if they're. You know, some of our brokers stock everything they have where they are. Some of them have stock located in this warehouse or that warehouse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we'll set up a time when we're when we're going to visit them, and they'll they'll order in the samples and have them ready for us. Mm. Um, so anyway, so in this particular case, we got everything from the broker, and he had all of this in his warehouse. Mm. Mm. Uh, we do have distillery direct relationships, but not with any of these mm. distilleries. Right. Yeah, that's nice. You can just get somebody to s- source everything out for you. You come in, you taste through, make your picks. Well, what I, what we really like about the way that we work, and and I, I don't want this to come out as if I'm, um, knocking, um, other independent bottlers at all because mm. that's, that's not what I'm, what I'm about to say is not meant to do that, but we don't have a warehouse. Right. We don't have a bunch of casks that we're sitting on that we have to bottle or else we don't make money. Right. Or that we, you know, have to spend time trading up to get other casks. Everything that we do is, you know, on the spot buying. So whatever we find that we love, we bottle. We're not sitting on a bunch of other stock, you know, our, our money isn't tied up elsewhere. You're not speculating. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. You know, I'm not, we're not necessarily buying a bunch of whiskey futures. Right. Right. Um, everything Which would be super fun on. too. It would be fun. Like, and, we, yeah. and we do, we've got, you know, maybe 10 or 12 casks lying around, uh, you know, that we filled at this distillery or that distillery. Um, but, you know, we don't base our business on that. That's just going to be some fun stuff 10 years from now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's less risk, and I guess it's easier to just find the things you really like rather than speculating on what they might be in ten years. Yeah, and it and it forces us to stick to our stick to our guns when it comes to selecting a cask. Mm. You know, if we're if we're sitting on stock, and I'm not I'm not suggesting that other independent bottlers do this at all, but if we're sitting on a cask, there's not that. Um, potential urge to say boy it'd be good to bottle this so we can bring in some other stuff and make room for you know other casts you know yeah it's nice to have that freedom to to buy in the spot market and just find it bottle it sell it Mm -hmm. well i guess i mean it is sort of a fantasy of mine to have like steve's rick house somewhere where i can just buy a bunch of stuff and then say "Hmm, i'm gonna stick this island this this two-year island malt in a in a you know, PX cask and let it sit there for yeah. 20 years. And then when I'm yeah. 60, I'm going to tap into it. But then I suppose you're, it's either going to be amazing mm-hmm. or that's going to be, you're going to have so much money in the, in that barrel at that point that you're basically going to, at some point keep tasting it every year. And you're like, ah, well, let's just drop it. Cause like we got to yeah. release it. Cause yep. you know, so you do get some of those indie bottling, like super old things and you're like you taste it you're like why is it so cheap like you know and then you taste it and you're like oh, oh just, right. you know yeah. not all old scotch is good i mean it's right so yeah. interesting well this is a cool one yeah it's a it's a nothing i would expect uh you're not uh, I, I guess i've ne- I never really tasted anything quite like this uh, I don't from a, from a malt i'm wondering if i've had glenn rothis at cast strength before because most of the stuff they put out is uh yeah, it's, it's like forty percent, forty three percent. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and to be very honest, um, their flavor profile, generally speaking, doesn't really match my my what what I enjoy in whiskeys. They mm. have released some vintages that I thought were phenomenal, but for the most part, um, you know, my palate doesn't necessarily match up to what they do. But that's the beauty right. of a single cask is mm. you know things can happen and. <laughs> And I find this to be sort of a little bit outside of your general Glenn Rothis 
you know, it's a little bigger, a little fuller, a little richer. Where Glen Rothis, I find, tends to be on the softer, more restrained a side. Leaner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's what I liked about it. It just, it really took me out of my Glen Rothis comfort zone and said, you know, do something about this. Bottle me. Mm hmm. I don't really know if I have a, the Glen Rothis comfort zone, but this is definitely different from the ones that I've sampled so far. It's nice. I mean, a big sherry, cast strength, malt. Seems like it's pretty much straight from the barrel. I don't know. Do mm-hmm. you guys do anything in terms of filtering? and? Um, it, there's just when it comes to bottling, it goes through, you know, a filtering process to, you know, so you don't get all woody bits. Sure. You know, so it's like a screen filter. filter. Yeah, it's just yeah. a no, screen filter. No, no like chill filter. Chill filter. Anything. Anything. No, 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 that no. BS. no. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not filtered. It's not chill filtered. It's not diluted in any way. Uh, the only time we've ever diluted a whiskey was one we were forced by law to do it by indian law we bottled a five-year-old amra mm. and mm. by indian law um the whiskey cannot exceed 62.8 percent alcohol hmm. so it was diluted so to 62.8 to downproof anything to yeah, that yeah yeah, huh. yeah. 62.8 yes Where, why I, such I a don't random know number yeah huh. I, don't, I, I honestly i don't know why but then with our and then also with our first jubilee bottling the the 15 year elijah craig that came in at like 74 some odd percent alcohol wow. and we wanted to bring it down to 61.3 percent uh for slightly jewy reasons mm, mm. um that's what i was wondering 13 commandments in oh. the bible <laughs> you know. that's what i was wondering with the 62.8 like is that some yeah, i don't no, know indian no. like thing, yeah right who knows? Who knows? some like ganesha got like passed down for 100 years right, like who knows? you know some kind that's of the number of Hindu arms that thing. <laughs> right that all the goddesses that, yeah, have combined all combined yeah i don't i honestly i don't know um the holy appendage yeah it's great to just throw a little, uh, <laughs> little uh, cultural ins- insensitivity, totally. and borderline racism yeah. into a podcast. I don't think anybody the holy from appendage. India <laughs> remember to this. that for another future name. The holy appendage. The holy appendage like as as a, a joint bottling. Cool. Instead of dark garbage. Dark garbage. Dark holy garbage. Appendage. Yeah, yeah, that's my band. Like dark garbage and the holy appendage. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's dark garbage is the band in the first. It's like a Frank Zappa album appendage. or something. Yeah. yeah. A CSNY song, dark garbage. <laughs> or is that dark star? All right, ready yeah, for the harmony. Dark star is the grateful dark dead. Dark star is grateful dead. Yeah. yeah. Is that grateful dead. Yeah. I don't know. I get my hippies mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One of the great grateful dead songs, actually. It is. It's like the legendary Mm -hmm. Grateful Dead song. All right, what's next? I don't think Bob sings on it, so that's pretty sweet. (laughs) (laughs) So our fourth and final one is from... uh, Is that a little Pete I smell? uh, That's a little Pete. This is from Ardmore. Mm. So Ardmore is a Highland single malt, uh, and it's always peated between 12 and 14 ppm, phenolic parts per million, so compare that to... Say like a 30 or 40 from a Laphroaig or something like yeah, that? Yeah, it's like 35 or so for Laphroaig, 50 for Ardbeg, 50 for Killen Omen. Um, or 258 for, for the <laughs> uh, yeah. and this is So this is 12 to 14. And give so a this little one peat. A, a little peat. It's a little peat, but give this, one a, give this one a nose and a taste. And I'm very curious. So 2008, curious what's the age? eight years old 2000 this year so all of these all of these are eight years old we and we sort of launched saying oh, it says right there eight years but there's yeah. no there's no proof on here yeah it's um i think it's 56.6 percent mm, okay um so the we tasted this next to a lafroy px cask mm. we, we wanted to launch with four whiskeys and this one, Ardmore Bourbon Barrel, beat out the Lafroy PX cask. Mm, wow. Um, there's something Some quite stiff st- competition. Mm. It definitely has a lot of a lot of smoke on the nose. Um, it's it's much much less so on the palate, but uh, I, I like it. It's it's clean and smooth. Mm-hmm. Uh, Are you getting that coastal note from it? A little, little of that sea salt. Yep. Which is very... Um, Tidal pool kind of... It's 
it's a note that you don't usually find in Ardmore because Ardmore, the the barley that they're using is peated using high, highland peat. It's not peated mm, using right. isla peat. It's not right. coastal. Yeah, so right. you shouldn't be getting that. Um, Interesting. So we're we're led to believe that we can't really confirm it, but we're led to believe that this Ardmore was matured in a Lafroig cask. Ah, so a refill. Yeah, so because it is a refill mm. bourbon barrel, and um, interesting. So after we bottled this, we started seeing some cask broker lists, and there's a fair amount of Ard- Ardmore casks out there listed as matured in a Lafroy cask. Hmm. Now this one didn't didn't say that on the paperwork, at least as far as I can remember. Yeah. Um, but we're ge- I'm getting that coastal isla like note to it. Yeah, that I don't normally get in an Ardmore, and it's peatier than twelve to fourteen exactly ppm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it ha- especially on the nose, it ha- it has a big smoke on the nose, and yeah, and, uh, just uh, I don't know what I would think this was if you just poured it for me blind. I mean, I probably would think it was some off Isla mm-hmm. cask. Like, it's just it's interesting to hear the the whole different uh, cask usage scenario that you're talking about where. You know, some some traits of yeah. a whiskey get left behind mm-hmm. in a refill cask and maybe used by another distillery. So really kind of confusing the different uh, themes that yeah. you would expect from one place to another. Sure. Bourbon and barrel wonder, used by Lafroy, then brought to the mainland. It's like stuff I never think about when, you're, think like, about when you're like, well, yeah. what's that? And you, you would ne- I would never yeah. in my mind be like, oh, well, maybe that was a Lagavulin and like sat in that for 16 mm-hmm. years and then. It was used by someone else, and it had a little bit of that feel and flavor because it does seem like it's an unusually smoky smell mm-hmm. also yeah. just for the, the the small amount of peat. Right. Yeah, it seems like there would be more. The PPM would be higher on this. Mm-hmm. But there's still this lovely sort of fruitiness to it. Um, yeah. In, in the back of the palate, it just sort of pops with fruit, which... You know, so that smoke and that sweetness really play nicely together. Mm-hmm. It even has like on the finish a little chocolatey kind of yeah, mm. chocolateiness or chocolate covered raisins kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, something on. chocolate fruit, like a like a, f- a, a fruit filled chocolate. Yeah, <laughs> you know those like uh, cherry cherry filled chocolates. Or oh, those yes. kind of, uh, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean an eight year peated cast strength malt. I dig it. It's good mm-hmm. stuff. Cheers, man. Yeah, Thank you. absolutely. These are like these are four really uh, different and great selections. I think for for the initial foray into retail world for you guys. Thank you. I mean, like I would say, if anybody can find these suckers at a store near them in what was it, Massachusetts, California, Illinois, New York, and New Jersey, New Jersey. Yeah. Like go check it out. Like you will not be disappointed if you can get your hands on one of these. What kind of, um, distribution, like how many bottles of each of these are hitting the market? Um, so for New York, New Jersey, um, it's like basically 14 cases of three of them. And, 20 cases of I just mean the total the total yield of these barrels oh, is it okay. like uh, so the Glen Rothis is about 300 bottles okay um, and the rest are right around the 250 mm-hmm. bottle range um, the Glen talkers for whatever reason had far fewer uh, y- yielded a far Lower fewer yield. number of bottles even though the cask is the same size mm-hmm. as the as the Glen Rothis it's about the um, same age. Yeah, it's about the same age. So, um, it's more yeah. of that random cask voodoo that you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, uh, very unpredictable. Just, you know, it could have been it was leaky. It could have been that right. someone decided to tap into it because it was Christmas time <laughs> and they needed to. You know, <laughs> they had a wee poke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Could so have had um, just some weird yeah d- uh, evaporation go on or who knows. And what's like the retail cost range for these? Um, so the single malts, so the last three that we had should be around 90 to $95 a bottle. Cool. And then the grain should be 80 to $85 a bottle. Nice. Okay. Yep. And these hit the stores when? February or March. Oh, so much for All my right. holiday plug. <laughs> no, yeah, that's cool. no, no holiday <laughs> plug. That's great though. Yeah. No, but I mean, coming uh, soon. really unique bottles under a hundred bucks, cast strength, single barrel, um, really unique stuff. I think a cool, like 
gift for somebody mm-hmm. who's you know exploring whiskey this is i mean we've drank a lot of whiskey and we've never had i mean i've never had gervin i don't know that i've really had a uh you know t- this tasty of a grain uh single grain um I think yeah. I've had Glen Rothis, I've had Ardmore, but definitely the Ardmore I had didn't taste anything like this. So nicely done. Cool yeah. choices. Yeah, Thank all you. like really cool, unique, uh, weird expressions of these different distilleries that I think come out r- and shine really well. The the like I find all of these really drinkable and uh, I'm I'm I I wanna find and grab a bottle of that grain grain <laughs> liquor, you know, yeah. like it's it's yeah. something I've never ha- really messed with, but I was impressed with that. It's it's like a, a great sipper. I would, mm-hmm. I would say. I think I said it earlier, but I just could see, you know, it's a good hanging out, sipping some whiskey. Also, this would be, these are all kind of stumpers for your whiskey snob friends. Like yes. if you pour them something, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. you're like, well, yeah. what do you think it is? And I'm like, oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> no one's ever going to get one of these. They'll no. never be like, oh, that's the Glenn Tokers. <laughs> oh, that's the 2006 screen from mm-hmm. Gervin. Yeah. yeah. No. No. Like, oh, is this cask 0700828? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's <Right>. one. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah. So thanks for coming. Yeah, and thank you for having me once again. Always do we fun. Have, uh, do we have time for one quick birthday dram? Or <gasps> yeah. yeah, a little happy, <laughs> happy, happy, happy birthday, birthday Josh. Uh, okay, let me go we'll find something. Wow, look at oh, that. Steve's digging into the the deep stash I'm here. F- I'm 43 and born in 1973. If that helps. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's got a few 73s back there. <laughs> Never you worry. Yeah, so Steve's Steve's going deep into the uh, Smoky Beast archives back there, looking through his um, secret stashes. Wow. Oh. Look at that old Stitzel Weller there's that you're like opening. A, and there's like a, <laughs> looks like a, a Whoa, Douglas, L- Douglas Lang old and rare well, box is getting day broken out. Pal, so. Holy moly. <laughs> I opened this for a recent special, special occasion. And uh, I think it'll fit the bill. Man, oh, Manischewitz. Oh. Holy crap. <laughs> 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 oh. Now we'll have a wee poke. So this is the Douglas Lang Port Allen 28-year sherry cask. Doesn't suck. <laughs> <laughs> this is really one of the best malts I have ever had, if not the best. I, I don't know that I've ever had a malt that I thought was this amazing. Wow. From the, it's like everything about this from the from – the, nose to the finish to the whole the whole shebang it's just it's it's just smooth rich smoky love (laughs) what amazes me about port ellen is it was for many years it was just sort of the you know i wouldn't say dirty little secret but it was that it was that distillery that you know years back people didn't care about they didn't want to drink Port mm. Ellen at a younger age, and then it gets a little older, and people say, "Wait a second, there's something actually really magical about this whiskey." Um, and so, you know, nowadays, I mean, how much do these things go for? I bought this some years ago, but oh, if you were to try and find this bottle now, I would say, you know, twelve, fourteen hundred bucks or something like that. Oh my. Anyway, happy birthday. Yeah, congrats, cheers. Yeah. congrats on SCN's oh, cheers. public yeah. live retail. That's Thank awesome. So and much. some delicious yeah, whiskeys. Of luck. And you're have, old, motherfucker. <laughs> you're ancient. I'd have to say this is a little better on the nose than the past four that we've tasted. <laughs> the nose <laughs> well, the nose on this is just amazing. I, we, I had a, Steve treated me to a little bit of this yesterday, and I, I was just like sitting there for about a half an hour just smelling it. Mm-hmm. It has just such a richness to the nose. And it has so much going on there. You guys have seen um, Pineapple Express? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That scene. Are you going for like the crucifix joint? Or like? be- right before <laughs> that. Right, right before that where, uh, what's his name? Uh, that's his name. James Franco. Where James Franco is, is showing Seth Rogen, you know, the Pineapple Express pot. Oh, yeah. He puts the bag in front of him and he goes... Smell it, smell it. <laughs> it's like God's vagina. <laughs> nice. Yes, this is this is maybe I- Isla, the gods of Isla's vagina, oh right here. God. Gods of I- Isla's vagina. Yeah. That's what we could call our bottle. Isla's vagina. Isla's vagina. <laughs>
<laughs> or just iGina. Isla, Isla Gina. Oh. Smoke Gina. Uh, it's like the Apple phone. It's like the iGina. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm glad we can edit this. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I'm just such a fan of this. Holy like, shit. It's, it's amazing. It's like chocolate covered chocolate covered roasted chestnuts mm-hmm. yeah mole sauce definitely has that mole deep complex chocolate a lot of flavors mixed in together like chocolatey raisin weird spices and mm-hmm. and what is this an uh, oloroso i don't think they say exactly what it is no they just say sherry what I love about these is just smell my box, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> smell my box. <laughs> oh my gosh, your it's box like, smells amazing. Right? It's yeah. like it's it's like my it's cedar a, box. Um, you have a gorgeous smelling box, sir. It is the 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 Douglas Lang Old and Rare. The boxes are first of all gorgeous. They're really cool with the, the kind of metal metal bindings yeah. and latches and everything. And then they they just uh, for whatever reason sort of absorb the the flavor and and smoke mm. and all of that. Oh, from a sherry butt. Sherry butt. Sherry, sherry butt. butts. Yeah, I've got I've got an old and rare. Um, it's a 1975 Glen Keith, mm. matured in a rum. Mm. Just says rum cask. Oh. Interesting. The juice is as dark as could be. Mm. I've yet to open it. Yeah. So like done in a dark rum. Interesting. Yeah. Is there a lot of that floating around, like rum cask malt? Um, I'd say there's a. F- Fair amount. Um, I don't know if I've ever had well, one. You, you, well, think about Belvini, right? Belvini, 14-year-old Caribbean. Caribbean. Rum. Oh, they do the Caribbean, So that's yeah. like a standard for them. Um, not my favorite, but... Yeah. I've had a bunch of ryes done in rum casks that are also not wonderful. Mm. But some people love it. But for me, the, the, the kind of weird spicy sweetness of the rum, just... I love rye just straight, and it just mm. does. It's just bouncy, bounces Jacks off it of up, it somehow. Yeah. yeah, it does a weird. I'm, I'm with you. Holy crap! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is a treat, man. Yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. Happy birthday! Thank you. I mean, yeah, this is definitely the 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 fave of all faves. I I really don't know that I've ever had a better malt, or or one that I enjoy more. I mean, I love the Isla stuff, and this is sort of the the pinnacle of sherry malt. Well, mm-hmm. the Isla, sherry, smoky the, Isla stuff. The peat is so well integrated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's not. It's it's there. It's all there. It's not yeah. in your face. The, you know, twenty eight years in the cask soften that out. Mm-hmm. The, and it's not so sherry that it's like stickly sweet and cloying. It's it's just perfectly balanced. Yeah, yeah. wonder wonderful balance to this. Yeah, it just marries together in the cask. Like the peat and the sherry are just one, almost mm. one note. It's like you can't, you can't s- separate them. So what we like really, you know, Steve and I never enjoy kind of making you guys listen to us drink awesome whiskey <laughs> that you can't have. But today, eh, fuck hey, you. We're Josh's having birthday. it. That's <laughs> the way it goes. It's a birthday treat for Josh. So <laughs> we did. you'll all have to put up with us just cooing over a whiskey <laughs> that you cannot have. Maybe we can <laughs> use this as a as an appeal to Douglas Lang to let us do a, a Beastmasters uh, cast. Because oh, like yeah. currently, I, I reached yeah. out to them currently. I think they only do one store in the U.S. that happens to be on the right. West Coast. So we could be like their East Coast, uh, you know. Um, but we did. I remember one of the one of the Beastmasters Club before it was public. We did a, a whole night of these mm. Douglas Lang Platinum yes. ca- coffin boxes. Oh, nice! Oh, it was amazing. Rosebank, yeah. Highland Park, Kalila, and Ardbeg. I think and they it was do. Just they do other stores. Than the next. Um, that was incredible. Did, oh. Julio's did a Glen Turret and a um, um, starts with a C. Another whiskey. Mm. <laughs> um, these though, like the the yeah no not that right but that's you what I'm know it was about. it was the the old malt cask oh sure you can right. get old malt yeah, cask yeah. and they do the double barrel yeah, and they have a bunch yeah. of different I'm brands the old and rare, rare. Uh, oh, okay. the, I'm talking okay. the old and rare yeah but we did do that that flight of all oh, all that old I and rare about that. coffin boxes that was an Amazing. incredible tasting yeah. that we that we pulled yeah, off really good. they just pick them I mean they you know they were whatever they're doing I don't know how much they they pick them now and how much I have a feeling they have stored away yeah but they're probably sitting on tons and like the Indiana Jones warehouse of (laughs) top (laughs) men top men but I I, I wouldn't doubt that they have lots of stuff and some they decide uh, they're tasting as they come along and they'll release out as the different collections 
and the stuff that seems to be aging best they save for the old and rare and yeah probably probably have some kind of selection process like that where they have a bunch of stuff and they kind of get rid of the things they think need to go yeah. and get bottled now and they hold the things they think can hold yeah right that would well, make they seem to be sense. of any of the independent bottlers they seem to be the ones with the most port allen mm. mm-hmm. they cornered the market on that yeah yeah or they were just smart whenever and they bought it up because mcgibbons is theirs too right isn't that a douglas lang like most of the port allen indie bottling seem to be the McGibbons, old malt cask yeah. mcgibbons provenance the uh Old and rare platinum. I think I bought this like off the shelf at a UK store like mm. some years ago. Like right at the beginning, I was like, "Oh, Port Allen." Actually, Josh Feldman, I think, poured me my first. Who was supposed to be with us tonight, but is sick. Hope you're feeling better, Josh. It sucks for you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Snoozy lose. <laughs> and I was like, "Ooh, this is something." I was like, "I love Lagavulin," and I was like, "This is the only malt I've had that I'm, that's like better than Lagavulin at the yeah. time." You yeah. know. Yeah. And so I started looking, and I was like, "Oh, here, you know, here it is at one of these UK online stores," and it was. It was kind of expensive. I think it was like maybe 300 pounds or something. And I was oh like, I'm going to buy a couple. By you know? today's standard, <laughs> right, it's a steal. Right. Man. Yeah. Yeah. You, I'd you buy a case. A yeah, third. totally. Yeah. Worry about the credit card bill later. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> mm, honey, what is this charge? I know it's your birthday, but uh, yeah. That's All the right. curse of whiskey is like you always should have bought a case. You know? Yes. You always kick always. yourself later. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, like just like we were talking about that William LaRue Weller. Yeah, yeah. Should, should have bought every bought every bottle we could have found. <laughs> should have biffed from Back to the Future that shit and oh like gone gosh. back and with the almanac. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're like, oh, which one? Mm. Well, great, very good. Thanks again, Josh. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Great Thanks to have you. Uh, See you again for soon. Me. And uh, uh, everyone out there, the definitely nation. look out for the single cask nation in stores near you in those states and uh, support it. Check yeah. it out. It, you, it will certainly be worth your while and your dollar. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.